Hello everyone and welcome to a preview of my favourite day of the year. It's Blue Diamond Day from Caulfield. Three Group 1s to look at, plus seven other stacked undercard races. The Group 1s obviously being the Futurity, highlighted by Mr. Brightside. The Oakley Plate, King's Gambit's the favourite. And the Blue Diamond Stakes, the feature where Coleman is the current favourite. You're probably wondering where the last week's winners segment were. And probably thinking that I forgot to put it in. Well, no, I didn't because I didn't actually get a winner last week at Flemington. So I'm a bit disappointed about that. But hopefully we can bounce back this week at Caulfield. I will also mention that I'm considering doing a vlog for Blue Diamond Day this year. I did a vlog for Blue Diamond Day last year at Sandown, and that was a lot of fun. Got 400 views, but I'm not worried about the views. I'm just um, just going to be telling you that I'm going to be doing a vlog. It should be out on Sunday if I end up doing a vlog, which I most likely will. And yeah, just go and give it a watch on Sunday or whenever you have the time. So the race previews this week are going to look slightly different because I've reintroduced replays into my preview. So there's going to be replays showing up on the horses that I like on Saturday. So I still have the market up. I'll just quickly brief on who's like the first, second, third favorite and all that. Then say who I like. Watch the replay, so sort of talk you through why I like it, and then mention some other key runners in the race. So let's get on with it now. Race one, a fitting race name to, well, basically the week that's gone on, really. The Vale, very elegant, open handicap over the 2,000 metres. My first play comes up in this race, and I'm going to have two units the win on number one, Dunkel. I wasn't a believer at the start of the prep, but now I am. This horse has won seven from 10 in its career, has only missed the top three once from 10 starts. It's just a trier and a winner most occasions. This was its last start run at the Valley on the 30th of December, so it's off a little bit of a let up where they went really slow. It dashed home and it won. Now the race didn't rate too well because of the slow tempo, but Dunkel couldn't have done anything about that. It was tucked in behind them. Um, Deserves to be carrying the 61 and a half kilos is just better than the rest of these and when I tied these all these horses ratings in weight adjusted weight adjusted this horse still came out on top despite the 61 and a half kilos so the weight doesn't really concern me should map well from gate number four and be very hard to beat a horse that was close to Dunkel was Glentaneous it's also off a let up its last run was on New Year's Day in the Bagot. Um, so they're off a similar break, Dunkel and Glentanius. I just think Glentanius is, or I just think Dunkel's more suited at the 2,000 metres right now than what Glentanius is. I'd rather be on Dunkel at the 2,000. And Dunkel has a map advantage over Glentanius. Flash Feeling's the third favourite, has the race fitness edge and the lightweight on the two favourites, which really suit. But is 2,000 metres really its go? Does it, it has to settle, it has to do everything right pre-race. There's just a few queries on flash feeling and energy conservation with that horse. But starting the day with a two-unit win on Dunkel. Race two is a benchmark 84 over the 1100 meters. No replay for this race because I'm still not sure on who my on-top selection will be. The favorite is Midtown Boss. I've got Midtown Boss in my top four, but not on-top selection. The one at the moment that I have got on top is Hanchi. Now, this race really confused me. I didn't really know uh, which horse to pick, but at the moment, I'm leaning to Hanchi just because the Sean and Jake Casey stable bring it over from WA, so they obviously think it's good. But they could have gone to the Group 3 Zedative Stakes for three-year-olds, which is what Hanchi is, a three-year-old, over the 1,200 metres worth 200k. But instead, they've gone to an open benchmark 84 against the older horses in a race worth 80k. So that sort of confuses me. Why wouldn't they just go to its own age group with double the prize money and even more than that? I'm just not sure why they would do that. I just think they think it's a really good horse and they're putting it in this class so it can show everyone what it's got, but I'm I'm not too sure. It confused me a little bit, the placement, but um, I'll be with Hanchi at the moment. The horse that I've got in for second is Miss Icelandic. I think this horse represents more value compared to Midtown Boss. They both ran on the same day. Um, and I think Miss Icelandic, uh, last start, I should say, they both run on the same day last start. Miss Icelandic draws well for a good run on speed from gate four, is fit and should be running well. Midtown Boss, I've probably got him for third at the moment. And one that I could throw into my top four is Swiss Exile, gelded, 
first up, Mark Zara on. At the moment, in the benchmark 84, I'm with Hanchi. Race three is the group two Angus Armanasco stakes over the 1400 metres. And in my opinion, this was the toughest race of the day to pick a winner. You've got the horses that are better than the rest of these that are coming back first up over unsuitable distances. And you've got the fit horses that are decent that can do well. At the moment, my on top selection is number six, so glamorous. No replay because I'm not too confident. Um, I think it has the fitness edge and that is beneficial. Damien Lane goes on, which I also really like was good behind Estriella in the Kevin Hayes and comes, I'd say, back in class despite Kevin Hayes being a group three and Angus Salmanasco being a group two. This field is weaker compared to the Estriella field, in my opinion. Um, but the main query I have with So Glamorous is the map. Draws gate nine. We'll probably have to go back to last. And usually 1,400 metres rail out four at Caulfield. You have to be in a non-speed position. So I'm not sure. If, if it's not So Glamorous, I don't know who I'm going to tip, to be honest. Autumn Angel... Probably because it has a good map and I just think it's a good horse. But apart from that, it's wide open. So it's so glamorous ahead of Autumn Angel for me at the moment. But I could swing to Autumn Angel. Race 4 is the Group 3 Zedative Stakes over the 1,200 metres. And no play in this race, but my on-top selection will be number 1, Brave Mead. This was its last start win first up at Caulfield on Australia Day in the Manfred Stakes where it burned across to the front, led it at a quick tempo, was stopping late but managed to hold on. The fact that it was stopping late just shows that it needed the run first up and will take plenty of improvement out of it. I love the three and a half to four week break for this horse. I just think it's the perfect time in between runs. Only query with this horse in my opinion on the weekend is the gate, gate 11. There looks to be a little bit of speed inside it and Blake Shin's going to have to make a decision. Also on top of that it has to carry the extra weight due to it you know proving that it's a good horse but it should fly across from the gate and it's around the chute at Caulfield so it's not like it's the end of the world if you're three wide no covers because it's just one bend but you would like to be outside the leader one out or in the lead with brave meat in my opinion I just think it's a really good horse and I think it'll be getting the job done in the zedative Race five is the Autumn Classic at Group 2 level over the 1,800 metres for the three-year-olds. And we're going to highlight the replay here of a race at Caulfield won by Just a Boom, also featuring the runs of Al Coover and Dunbelieven. Now, out of this race, I think the one you have to be following is Dunbelieven. Just wasn't suited by the fast tempo, got too far back, was hard ridden a long way out and really good through the line. Now draws well to settle closer, fourth up fitter and gets the blinkers back on. I think $12 is way over the odds for Dunbelieven. At the moment, it's my on-top selection. The market's treating this form reference as not the strongest. The favourite at the moment is Caracas. This horse, Caracas, hasn't been rating too highly on my rating system, so I'd be a bit sceptical of it. I'm taking it on at the moment, especially at the price. Um, Sox Nation would have to be my second pick. Um, Kira Mark could have taken this horse to the group two Angus Armanasco, 1400 metres, but he's instead put it against the boys up to 1800 metres, which I think shows signs of intent. Should settle on speed from the gate, Sox Nation, and be hard to beat. The one that I think is over the odds is Flying Mascot's nephew, Wilmot, or half nephew to be exact, Wilmot. This horse uh, started favourite for a race last start at Sandown on a Wednesday meeting, and just did a lot wrong, gets the visors on for the first time, draws gate eight up to the 1800 meter suits with that horse. So at the moment for me, it's Dunbelieven ahead of Sox Nation and Wilmot, my top three at the moment, but it's a very hard race. Race six is the group two, Peter Young stakes at weight for age level over the 1800 meters. Finally, we get to another play. I'm having two units, the win on number seven, Campionessa. When you look at the form, this horse should just be winning, shouldn't it? It's got two factors, which none of the other horses in the race do. Fitness and Group 1 competitive. Now, the favourite is Gold Chip at $2.60. It's Group 1 competitive, but it's not fit. It's first up, it'll improve with the run, and it's drawn to get back for Mark Zara. Ran second in this race last year, but that was down the long sand down straight. This is down the 300 metre Caulfield straight, even though it's I don't even know. It, has, it hasn't won at Caulfield before. I was about to say, even though it's won at Caulfield before, it's run well at Caulfield before, running second behind Durston in a Caulfield Cup. But I just don't like the setup for Gold Trip on Saturday. Campionessa, I think, should start favourite. It's fit. It's proven at Group 1 level. 
We just saw a Turby Dyke stakes run behind Legato. It's fit. It draws well for a good run for Mickey D. I think back to the 1800 meters suits, it's the one I want to be with. And the fit ones just don't have the class of Campionessa, in my opinion. Zen Zella needs to take a step up, but can run well. Unusual Culture definitely needs to take a step up, and so does Foxy Cleopatra. And that's just about the race, isn't it? So I'm with Campionessa, two units to win, pretty confident. It's that time of the week, it's last man standing, and last week, Simon was the only one that made a profit. He got the tips to me through late Thursday night again, and he will probably do the same again tonight, so I'm going to have to probably give him a $100 deduction, because that's the fourth week in a row now, and um, I don't blame him, because he sounds pretty busy. Sammy still clear on top. I think I'm in third. Geordie followed by Skaha Horse Racing. So we'll see what we're doing this week. Sammy is going to have $50 the place on Unusual Culture in the Peter Young. He's going to have $20 on As Fura the win in the Oakley Plate and a $30 exactor in the Futurity. Mr. Brightside first and second. I'm pretty sure that's Munamek and Buffalo River. We'll move on to what I'm doing. I'm having a $100 win multi Dunkel into Campionessa and a $200 place multi Dunkel into Campionessa. Hopefully he can get a return there. Geordie, he's going to have 200 the place on Celerity in the Silver Slipper up at Rose Hill. Also going to have 100 the win on Fearless in the Blue Diamond, 100 the win on King's Gambit um, in the Oakley Plate, and 100 the win on Tun Curry Race 8, a girl's best friend. Make sure you tune into that. And Sky High Horse Racing's having 150 the win on Dunkel, 150 the win Midtown Boss, and a $200 win multi Dunkel in a Midtown Boss into Mr. Brightside. That's what we're doing for Last Man Standing this week. Race 7 is the first of the feature group 1s. It's the Futurity Stakes over the 1,400 metres at Wait for Age level. And we're going to take a look at the market first. We should take a look at the market first. Mr. Brightside, favourite, $1.50. Attrition and Nugget are pretty short in terms of the rest of the field. Buffalo River also in there with Pericles. We're going to take a look at the last start run of Mr. Brightside and Buffalo River in the Sea of Four Stakes where Pride of Jenny did her usual thing, going out hard in front and almost paid off, but Mr. Brightside was able to run it down late. Buffalo River was also very good too. Um, the query is how much did this run take out of Mr. Brightside? In my opinion, he's going to be a little bit flat second up, but he might just... Class still might just prevail with Mr. Brightside because he's so good. The horse that I think is over the odds is Buffalo River. Buffalo River only finished within a half a length of Mr. Brightside on this occasion, I'm pretty sure. And even though Buffalo River was second up and Mr. Brightside was first up, Buffalo River still wasn't ready. He still needs a couple more runs to get into his preparation. And I think third up now, he's ready to show his best. He looks to get the sole lead in this race with Pride of Jenny not in this race. He might cop some pressure from Hey Fat Cat with the 55 and a half kilos, but Buffalo River, it's it's him. He just does his thing. He just goes out hard. And I think it could pay off and he will run a bold race and he's going to look the winner at some stage, Buffalo River, which is why I'm having one unit on the Quinella, the box Quinella with Mr. Brightside and Buffalo River. 100% I'll get if it gets up. So I think Buffalo River could hold on to win if Mr. Brightside is flat, but I think Mr. Brightside's still good enough to get into a placing, especially if it's second, because I've got the Quinella. But if Mr. Brightside blitzes him, I still think Buffalo River's going to hold on for a long way, and, long way and hopefully run second. So that's my look at the Futurity. I'm heavily in the camp of Mr. Brightside and Buffalo River. Race 8 is the feature of the day. It's the Group 1 Blue Diamond Stakes over the 1,200 metres. Coleman is the favourite at $4. I'm pretty sure Lady of Camelot is second favourite. We're going to take a look at the last start run of Coleman. This was in the Chairman Stakes on the 3rd of Feb where he just settled on speed. He took a while to wind up. Well, I shouldn't say that. It only took him about five or six strides to hit top gear and once he did he powered away from the rest was really good through the line as well draws gate seven on saturday which i think is the most ideal barrier he could have drawn will be on the outside of horses should get into the clear and show his best the only query with this horse i've got is 1200 meters i think he'll get it but he's just won both times in his career over a thousand meters so i can't be too confident yet but 
He looks to have trained the house down at the Caulfield Gallops on Tuesday morning. Ben Mellum said to Matt Laurie he should be winning. Matt Laurie thinks he'll be highly competitive. And it's not like Matt Laurie to say that. He's usually pretty quiet. So um, I think he thinks it's a really good horse and it will be very hard to beat. In terms of the opposition, in my Blue Diamond preview video that I put out a couple of weeks ago, I had Stay Focus as my second seed. But now that it's drawn the car park, I'd probably have Bodyguard and High Octane in front of it. I'd probably have High Octane into second now because Bodyguard has showed signs of lameness and Stay Focus has drawn the car park. So High Octane is probably my second pick. Kira Yanagi, I think, can run well. Draws gate two and will eat up 1,200 metres. But in my opinion, I'm having 1.5 units to the win on Coleman or... I think 1.5 units to win on Coleman, if I remember my staking plan correctly from when I did it before. So that's what I'm going to be doing in the Blue Diamond Stakes. 1.25 units to win, I just remembered. Race 9 is the Group 1 Oakley played over the 1,100 metres. They're going to fly in this race. And right down the bottom, you find the favourite, King's Gambit, 50 kilos, J Car Gate 1. 450 ahead of us for a $6. Sharipa and Benedetta are also close in the market. We're going to take a look at the Rubiton stakes for uh, a replay reference. Kalos as Fura and hypothetical feature. Kalos ends up winning it. I want to talk about this horse compared to Asfura. Kalos beats Asfura by a length on this occasion. Kalos gets a one kilo weight swing on Asfura into this run. So shouldn't that mean that Kalos wins by more on Saturday? I think... That's what that says in terms of the weight and the last start margin. And Callus is $14 and as for is $6. I don't know how that works in terms of judging off last start, but I do know how it works judging off last start starting price because as for was $2 and Callus was $17. I just think Callus deserves to be shorter, but does draw wide and Blake should have to get a little bit further back than what he probably would like. The other one in that race was Hypothetical, who gets a four kilo weight drop off last start, which I think puts it in a really good spot. Why did this horse go so quick in the lead if Anthony and Sam Friedman know that they were going second up into the Oakley plate? It just confused me a little bit. I think it was to get it fit, and I reckon it might be topped off now, second up heading into an Oakley plate. Is it good enough to win the Oakley plate is a query, but I just think... Gets treated well with the weights compared to the rest of the Rubiton field from last start. And it ran well last start, first up. And I think second up, it'll be fitter. The only query is whether it's good enough to win. But how I'm seeing it in terms of my numbers in order is probably hypothetical ahead of Kalos, ahead of Asfura, ahead of King's Gambit. It's a wide open race. I've never tipped an Oakley Plate winner, so don't listen to me. I'm with hypothetical. Race 10 to finish the day is the Mannerism Stakes for the Mares and Phillies, I'm pretty sure, over the 1,400 metres Group 3 level. Last week, replay Flemington was of the, what's the race called, over 1,400 metres? Tressity. The Tressity Stakes won by Revolutionary Miss. Forbidden City was a good run and Eternal Flame was, well, you can see by the vision, it should have won and... I had it last week, and I'm sticking with it this week. I'm having 1.5 units to win on Eternal Flame. I, I just think this horse, considering it should have won last week, it gets in really well with the weights. Three kilos off Revolutionary Miss. Draws gate eight, so might have to get a pair or two further back than what Ethan Brown would like. But I just think this horse is really, really good and can show what it's worth here. I really like Eternal Flame. The other one that I'm happy to have is 0.75 units to win on running by. I think this horse has been running really well in some benchmark races. Now comes back to mares only races. Maps well from gate six for Johnny Allen. They scratched it from last week in the Tressity to save it for this race. So I'm happy with 1.25 units to win on Eternal Flame and 0.75 units to win on running by. In terms of the others, Revolutionary Miss can win. Sticky Draw, Vagrant, I would love to have it again but just didn't rate high enough to put it on top for me um, heading into this run, although it draws well and Damien Lane goes on. So to finish, Eternal Flame running by in the last race. It's now time for the Quaddy. Still haven't won one yet. Uh, last week's Quaddy was very hard to get. Imperatriz is the only one getting it done for us. Um, Macram, I don't think anyone found that. 
didn't have Riff Rocket and didn't have Jenny Lala. But we move on to this week. $100 for 52% for charity stakes. Number one, Mr. Brightside. And number six, Buffalo River. In the Blue Diamond, I've gone with six. Bodyguard, number three. Coleman, number four. Stay Focused, number five. High Octane, number eight. Anisa, number 12. And Kuro Yanagi, number 14. Leaving out Lady of Camelot. In the Oakley Plate, one Kalos, two Azfura, 10 Hypothetical, 15 Kings Gambit. And in race 10, the Mannerism Stakes going for, I'm going to try and remember, one Revolutionary Miss, four, no, one Revolutionary Miss, seven Forbidden City, eight Running By, ten Eternal Flame, leaving out Vagrant in the last. Thank you all for watching my Blue Diamond Day preview. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I get at least one winner this week because that would be handy. Gives me something to cheer about on the vlog if I do end up doing one. So stay tuned to the tips. Hopefully I tipped you into a winner and I'll see you all to do it all again next week, Australian Guineas Day, Flemington.